I'd like to apologize in advance that my videos have a tendency, all of them, uh, have a tendency to be sort of low tech. Most of them are recorded in my car as I drive to work. That's because I have the most time to do that. Uh, hopefully they remain fairly succinct and make sense and are educational. This video is being shot as a narrative. Then what I'll do is go through and drop uh, pictures, images, videos, uh, captions, and that sort of thing uh, as a backdrop to the narrative so it makes sense. Alrighty then. This video is about anchor worm and fish lice. <clears throat> the reason I did that is because I'm driving home and I think I'm going to make it home pretty good because there's not a lot of traffic and anchor worm and fish lice are so easy. So uh, there, there's going to be a brief video and I could knock it out quick on the way home. So let's talk about anchor worm. Anchor worm is a parasite that you will see attached to your fish. You probably won't know that the fish have this parasite until you see the anchor worm, which is shaped like the letter Y, till you see that anchor worm sticking out from under a scale. Um, usually, you'll see two or three of them sticking out from under a scale, and usually they're attached to the underside of the fish, which I find amazing because how did those parasites know that by attaching underside of the, the fish, we wouldn't be able to see them? Like... If they attached on the top of the fish, we could look at it and see the parasite much more easily from above. Anyway, that attributes intelligence to these uh, little parasites. Let me toss out a few more little facts. Um, you know, you might be at a cocktail party or something, try to impress somebody. And uh, you know, the, the ladies love it. You know, when a guy comes up and goes, hey, did you know that all of the anchor worms you see sticking out from under the scale are female worms? <laughs> they melt. But that's true. I, I just, uh, did you see what I did there? I fit in a little factoid in a, 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 a limp joke. Uh, let's go back because it's relative, relevant. So the fish, lo uh, anchor worm, lives in the tank for like seven molting phases. It's a free-swimming organism. If I can find a picture of the free-swimming organism, I'll, I'll put it in the video as a background for just a second. Um, it's rare to find those, but they go through a molt cycle and they tear up the fish while they're doing it. So that's relevant. The uh, free-swimming version of the anchor worm tears up your fish, makes them flash and scratch makes them a little bit weak, uh, might put them off food, might give them some little marks or whatever. But then finally, the, uh, the free-swimming version will uh, mate. The male and the female will kind of, you know, hunker down. And then the female only, not the male, the female worm will embed itself underneath a scale on the host fish. And then you'll see the worm sticking out, and it's shaped like the letter Y, which I told you earlier. Now, the thing about that, what you're looking at actually is the female worm, and then the Y are actually two egg cases. And then she uh, lays, you know, those eggs hatch out, and the uh, cycle repeats itself. A uh, free-swimming version that tears up your fish and then turns into an anchor worm. So you might say, uh, Eric, I've been listening to you talk about anchor worms for a minute. I really just want to know two things. How do I treat it? And should I or should I not pull off the worms? All right. <clears throat> the answer to the question is don't pull off those worms. Seriously. And I'll tell you why. When you pull those worms off, you're handling the fish. And handling the fish, especially the small ones, is very stressful to the point that you can actually depress their immune system and you create abrasions in the skin and the handling in the net isn't very nice to the fish. For the benefit of pulling those worms out, now you can pull those worms out intact sometimes. Other times the worm separates and you leave the head under the scale, in which case you've handled the fish, scratched it up, pulled on these uh, worm lesions, and still left the head in. Other times you pull the thing out completely and you create a bigger lesion than would have been created if you just let that female worm die. 
So I'm a fervent believer in leaving the worms on the fish. Now, what you need to do is kill those worms in the phase before they get under that scale, but when the female's sticking out from under the scale, you can kill her too with the same medicine that kills the free swimming version. What's that, you say? The medicine to kill anchor worm is an insect growth regulator. Uh, one of the current versions on the market is made by, I believe, Microbe Lift. And there's another one I believe comes from Praziquantel. And then there's another one out there on the market if you keyword search the words Express IDI. Now, if these products go off the market or you have trouble finding them or whatever, and you go to the following website, you'll be able to find these things, uh, links to where they're at on Amazon or websites or whatever. Here's the website where you'll be able to find them. It's coivet.com slash resources. That's K-O-I-V-E-T, coivet.com slash resources. And that should pop up on the screen as well. You go there, and it will have current versions of where these medications are. So you get the idea that anchor worm is a problem even before you see the worms. And then once you see the worm sticking out from under the skin, you're looking at breeding females. And you should not pull off those worms. Let the worms die with the insect growth regulator, which actually works on the crustacean that they are. And those worms will fall away over the course of two or three days, and the fish will be as good as new. Let's move on to fish lice. Fish lice are basically a branchiarian parasite. I know, right? I know you knew that. A branchiarian parasite, and they're free swimming, and they can be kind of large, and they bite. And they are, uh, there should, I'll put a video of an Argulus fish louse on uh, the screen at some point during my discussion of said parasite. The body shape of the Argulus fish louse is disc shaped. There are two eye spots on it uh, to where I guess it can kind of see, at least light or dark. It has two great big suction cups on it that it uses to hold on to the fish, and then it's got a stinger. And if you hold it the right way and your skin is kind of thin, you can actually feel it trying to stab you in the hand. It, it doesn't hurt. It's not a big deal. It's just a little disconcerting because you'll be sitting there going, uh, look, I got an Arculus, and it'll, you'll be able to feel it being a, 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 that guy, you know, that tries to hurt you. Um, most of the time, you can see the reproductive organs hanging off the back of the thing. The diagnosis of those has been fairly typical with koi and goldfish. <clears throat> Normally, you look at tropical fish from the side, and it's easy to see the fish louse. But with koi and goldfish, um, normally you see them from the top. And w the owner will call me up and say, my fish have shimi or freckles. Well, shimi is a problem in koi skin where they start to deposit little black dots and not the pretty kind of black dots. They're kind of like Cindy Crawford freckles. And uh, they come from derangements in water quality. Some people say the water's too hard, too much calcium, whatever. And that may be true. But the client calls you up and says, my fish have freckles or my fish has developed shimi all of a sudden. And... Um, well, because this actually happened. And then um, I get a call back about an hour or two later, and they go, I have an update for you. Those freckles have moved. What they're actually seeing is fish lice, because fish lice on the skin have a tendency to be kind of a dark or transparent green color. Uh, that's the color of the body of, of, of uh, fish lice. And so you see them attached to the skin, and then uh, they move around. So there's a couple of relevant points to fish lice. First, they too, just like anchor worm, they too chew up your fish while they're in their free swimming version. Um, so you'll see flashing and scratching for a minute, and then you'll see, all of a sudden, you'll see the actual fish lice, and you'll go, oh, that's why they've been scratching for the last three or four days. And guess what? Fish lice are killed by the same medicine that gets rid of anchor worm. 
So what you're going to look for is a insect growth regulator like Express IDI or the Anchors Away if you can still find it or the uh, product from Microbe Lift. You're looking for something like Lufenurone or Dimelin. And uh, you can look up the active ingredient in these medications, and you'll see that they're insect growth regulators. And uh, one of them is Larvidex. Used to be Jungle Lifeguard. Uh, used to be Larvidex, uh, or have that in it. Uh, anyway, my point is that these two parasites are very easy to treat. And here's an interesting tidbit. Most of the parasites that you see on fish are actually dependent on the weakness of the fish. Well, anchorworm and fish lice are not. You can have strong fish, and they will still get those two parasites. So in the overview and recap, you get the idea that these two parasites you can see with the naked eye. You would see them probably about the same time you started seeing a lot of flashing and scratching, which is their babies coming up, and then you'd flip the fish over and see anchorworm, or you would just look at freckles on the backs of the fish from above. The treatment is simple. It's an insect growth regulator. You apply that to water somewhere in the 70s uh, as far as temperature, and within three days, all the parasites, including the babies, are gone. So that's real easy. Uh, let me toss out there that the, the uh, medications that treat anchorworm and fish lice are also toxic to crayfish, and that matters for two reasons. First, if you have crayfish in your uh, pond, they're going to take a dirt nap. Second, if you are discharging your pond into the public or, you know, the uh, natural waterways, you're going to hurt the crayfish and other crustaceans in there. So, you know, kind of exert a certain amount of control over what you do with the water, and uh, the Mother Nature would thank you. So this is the video on anchorworm and fish lice. Hopefully it's well illustrated and well captioned and not too boring. I appreciate your attention. It would be very nice of you if you would subscribe and accept notifications so that you know when the next video comes out. And also, if you would click like on this video, what that will do is push it up in YouTube search engine to where other uh, YouTubers can find this video and get uh, maybe the benefit of understanding how simple these those two parasites are. So like and subscribe. This is Dr. Eric Johnson signing off. Thank you.